what is up everyone JD here I hope you're all doing well today today I'm gonna to be bringing you another everyday carry walk and talk as I move some of this crap out of my way apologies it's hot in this garage so I do have the fan going on in the background I'm gonna do my best to stay leaned in on the microphone so that I am not um, being droned out by the little bit of a fan that I have I have one of those um, rotary fans the kind that they use for like drying out carpet when there's been a leak from a hot water heater busting or something like that um, it's like a cyclone fan it works so good but I know that it makes a little bit of droning noise in the background and actually I'm gonna try to reposition my microphone over here behind the knife case that I have off to the right in hopes that it actually helps block some of the wind. You might hear the fan noise itself that it makes when it's going, but hopefully you're not hearing the wind noise because I have the mic cover on it and um, I've moved it in a position where I think it's kind of blocking it, but you might hear a little bit of like a noise going on. Anyway, today I actually wanted to talk about Blade Show 2022. I am very interested in what your thoughts were about all the coverage. I did not get to make it, unfortunately, due to my work schedule. It was a conflict. This will be the last one that I miss. I will be going back next year 100%. I cannot afford to fly out to Cali Hole and pay for all that gas that uh, it cost for those tickets to go out to the West. But anyway, I can't can't afford to go out there so I am going to be missing out on all the blade shows this year I would only ever go to the east anyway I'm in Virginia if you didn't know that so I'm just a hop skip and a jump away I probably could have drove down but I wouldn't have wanted to have gone down and kind of you know just seen what was left over you know all the good stuff is gone by the time Saturday rolls around you might be able to find one or two things that people missed or didn't pick up on but what I want to talk about is Blade Show 2022, all the coverage, everything that I've seen, the videos that I have watched, and my thoughts about that. So I think the very first thing that I want to talk about is my level of enthusiasm after seeing the show. So I kind of fall into two different spots. I felt very underwhelmed. I did not see a whole lot that has me super pumped or excited. As a matter of fact, I would say the Winter Blade Factor, which was not on display at Blade Show 2022, actually has more ex has me more excited about the knife industry as a whole because it's a new technology. It's something very different from anything that you're going to experience on the market right now. So that's what I'm saying when I talk about that it does not have me very pumped or excited for anything that's going on coming out of blade show 2022 i think it was very underwhelming i think it was more or less the same old thing you're seeing people take old models and turning them into button lock variants um and here's my issue with that before i jump too far ahead i don't want to see you take a model that's been out for a year or two or that it's one of your flagships and you just turn around and offer a button lock version of that. I would like to see what you are seeing happen with Civivi. They did one, one knife. They took the Elementum and they made it a new model. They made it longer. They made it taller. Not taller. They just made it longer. It has better ergos to me. The, uh, the Elementum button lock, I'm going to try to bring this in a little bit because I feel like I'm too far away now. Um, and you can see the bottom of the mic stand. The Elementum bo button lock, I feel like even though the, it was an Elementum, they, um, they changed it. They revised it. That's the word I've been searching for for the last 60 seconds. They revised it and made it 
fully improved, right? They gave it the button lock, they made it longer, it has better ergos. Um, still had a hollow grind, one of the very few that are still in their inventory that has a hollow grind on it, which makes it a very slicey knife. I personally like flat grinds because they can get them thin enough behind the edge for them to be slicey, but it still has enough of a robust blade to be strong and hard use and heavy use and me not worry about it. Um, where you have other brands just taking, <laughs> they make a million versions of a particular knife and then they turn around and made a button lock version. And that's all well and good because let's say that this is your absolute most favorite knife that they make, period. Like the Beg Lighter is your jam. You love this thing. You love it more than anything. And they turn it into a button lock. And now you have the best of both worlds. And I get that. I understand that completely. I understand why you might like that. CJRB did it with the Feldspar. For me, and I'm going to leave this out here, I just feel like it's more exciting to have new models, to have different things being done to them than it is to revise old models and just be doing that. Now, I know that Kaiser has come out with some new models, but they seem to be leaning in more heavy, in my opinion, coming out with older versions, turning them into button locks. And, you know, I understand if it's probably their best seller, why they would wanna do that. Because button locks are popular. It's an opportunity to make money. Making money means that they can invest into research and development and make new knives make new designs work with designers to come up with new designs and i want to do that all i'm saying is that in blade show 2022 it seemed to be more of the same um i didn't really see anything innovative i didn't see anything that super duper jumped out at me on a regular basis that's not to say that i didn't see anything but for example when demco showed the 8022 it's basically an 80 20.5 without the thumb studs and a bigger thumb hole. 3V, which is a more premium steel, but you can now pick up the 3V at Knife Center if you haven't already, if you've been holding out saying you want a more premium blade steel, 3V is it, I'm telling you. Um, it is a little bit less contoury and a little bit more chunkier, and it still has the same lock on it. So to me, I was kind of like, eh, but then, if you watch the Knife Center video, you'll see where Demco pulled out an AD10 and it is a different lock system on that AD10. And it's a lock that he has made, but I, I believe, and I'm not sure, it looked like Cold Steel also debuted a lock system that was like that. So a little bit different than this one that comes out. It looked like kind of the factor if you've seen that video where the factor is but anyway it looks like it has the indention of the tool it's let's just say this was flipped reverse actually i'm sorry you know what let's just say this was inset and they had the cutout here all down the side so that you could operate this inside the handle this little space here is all you need to operate that you, it looked like it was cut out big enough for your finger to get down in there and it looked like a oops, thicker uh full sized uh, pocket knife and it had like that slide lock system but he, he said it was different than the shark lock in the video if I recall correctly which was very exciting to me so you see how you have like this little cut out here that's kind of what it looked like like you could put your finger down in here and you could actuate the lock exactly how you're doing the shark lock um, and it even, and that's what I love about these locks the um, well, I don't have a bench made out here the crossbar locks and the Shark lock is that it has 100% lock up on the knife. The compression lock, while it is wedged in here, it's still just a you know 20 or 30% lock up of the blade, whereas you're getting 100% on those knives, which is why they're so strong. But anyway, circling back, that was interesting. That was very interesting and very exciting. Otherwise, you're basically going to blade show maybe to experience knives that you haven't had the opportunity to experience in person. Definitely to try to get a one-off that they made exclusively, which is usually a colorway, maybe a different steel. Um, maybe it has like Protect puts that mother of pearl button on some of theirs, but that's really it. And it's a huge markup for that. Like it's way too much. They get you on the excitement of the show and the product and have it in your hand. Um, and I just think it's way too marked up. So it's just not exciting for me in that regard. 
I, again, there's tons of knives. I, I think the um, big thing with Blade Show also is getting to meet the designers, the manufacturers in person, to talk to them, build a relationship with them, um, get to see who's earning your money, right? What type of person they are, which is going to lead me into the next segue, which is going to be Shirtgate 2022. And I think everybody kind of knows what I'm referencing on that. So uh, Greg Medford brought this caricature shirt there that um, was to identify the working class Chinese person with the Chinese government basically bending them over the barrel, um, taking the money and reinvesting all of the profits and everything that they tax for these companies into the military programs and really not caring about how it affects the worker. So that's the general idea of this character culture. I'm struggling with that word um, t-shirt that he brought out there when I saw it it was a little grotesque and off-putting for me and um, you know I think he probably could have found a way to do it a little bit more tasteful but that's not Greg Medford if you're just seeing this t-shirt for the first time and your gut reaction is that he's a racist that is not a racist act he is trying to make a political statement using this now your interpretation of it may be racist because the china the chinese man was saying thank you instead of thank you you know um like if you watched a jackie chan movie and you saw the outtakes and how he struggles with the language I could understand your interpretation of how that is picking at that fact. Um, so I understand it from that perspective and I get it, but that in itself is not racist. Comedians have been doing that for years. Um, we laugh at ourselves, not necessarily to pick on people, but to laugh at our flaws, to, to show that we have vulnerabilities, that we are vulnerable as a race, as a human being, and that's my interpretation of it. If yours is different, that is your prerogative, and that doesn't mean that we can't be friends and that we cannot get along in the industry. I really don't feel like that was Greg's intent. Um, at first, I could tell, I could tell that it hurts him when people call him racist, and you know how I can tell that, and I wish he wouldn't have taken that video down, but I think he was afraid he was going to get a strike with YouTube because it was very, um, it was laced with vulgarity. It had a lot of offensive language, you know, F this, S that, kiss my this. Um, but let me tell you a little bit of something. That, that reaction in itself, if you take a step back and you look at it, you will realize that the reason that Greg reacted that way is because he's a human being who was hurt by the fact that he continuously gets called racist because he is not racist in that regard. Does he hate China as a country, as a political monster? Yes, I really believe that that's where his rage comes from, where his anger, not his rage, where his anger comes from is that he hates that China steals technology, uses it to make a profit, steals the money from that company to invest in their military regime and to put and to pad their pockets quite frankly which is pretty much politicians in a whole and then doesn't take care of the workers um you know it's i think that's where his passion for it comes from i think he doesn't articulate it all the time in certain aspects i think when he gets hurt and he's upset about the fact that he's called a racist or he's called this or he's that. Um, I think his feelings get hurt and I think sometimes he reacts because if you watch the video that he released after that where he came down, he was collecting his thoughts before framing his statement that he was about to make. He was thinking through the process. Now, I'm not saying that Greg needs to dial it back or present it one way or the other if that's really what his passion is and the fact that he doesn't want the Chinese to be better than us. Um, he doesn't want Russia. He doesn't, you know, and if you're of a younger generation, it may be a little bit hard to understand communism and what it is. For me, um, I'm a first generation American citizen. I'm, that means I was the first of my family born in this country. My, com my family hails from a dictatorship in a communist country. So I really understand 
the perspective and the philosophy and understand where it's coming from because if you haven't lived it you can't fully understand it and what happens and what's going on and why it's important to have these conversations now greg is very in your face and that rubs and offends people and they get defensive um, or there may be virtue signal and jump on the bandwagon without collecting all the information i chose to look at the shirt I acknowledge it was grotesque. I understood its message, but I didn't care for it. That doesn't mean that it was bad or good or anything. It just means that's how Greg wanted to articulate it himself. But I definitely think like poking fun at that situation is what is striking the nerve. So getting back to Blade Show 2022, um, a lot of the videos, it's been very enjoyable to see it. And I loved to see a lot of the presenters getting together. I think that was the most fun for me. Um, the interviews were all well and done they were done very well they're very good i like the fact that they got to the table and got to ask the questions and talk to the manufacturers and the makers i think the the letdown for me with the products there wasn't as much innovative stuff that i shot thought should have been there at 2022 but i also understand uh supply chain maybe slows some of that down um and i get it i kind of get why it's like that i just want i just thought it was disappointing i was hoping for a little bit more i was hoping for a little just a little bit more uh innovative stuff and maybe newer models and things of that nature um you know like protect coming out saying hey we're coming out with a budget line we're gonna make <laughs> we're gonna make g10 stuff to compete with spider code like just something to be like oh shit um that's just where i'm coming from anyway this video is running a little bit long i've kind of touched on the things that i wanted to touch on from blade show um if you enjoyed today's video i know it's a little bit deeper than normal i don't typically go too deep into the weeds here but i did want to touch on it because i i wanted to talk to it but i also wanted to hear others perspective and others thoughts on the situation and what they're thinking anyway leave a like if you enjoyed the video subscribe turn on the notifications if you already have thank you for your support you are awesome and i hope all of you have a fantastic week until next time peace